love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your yeah, jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Florida, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They will also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. Of course, I'm Trezor Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your host, Cam and Mace. What's up, man? You feeling good? Well, under the weather, I'm going to my, put my little tie on a Monday. <laughs> you sick or you sick of Colorado? <laughs> 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 no, that was great. That was great. <laughs> no, let me stop. We're going to wait. We're going to wait. They, they, they were slipping. Go ahead, take yeah, advantage, they man. They were yeah, slipping, man. man. I ain't got nothing to say I about that. They right slipping. now. They said they're calling for Dion, but I ain't going to go that far just yet. They said nah, they're nah, calling nah, for nah, Dion. Now nah, niggas reaching. But I ain't say that. Niggas reaching. Yeah, pardon me, y'all. I'm a little under the weather, but uh, I'm ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Let's get it. Okay. There are officially no more undefeated NFL teams remaining. The 49ers lost to the Browns 19-17. to What are your thoughts on the game and the 49ers? Um, the, the 49ers, I mean... When you think about it, that Moody, Moody, come on now. What what a name to lose the game on. <laughs> Moody. <laughs> All he had to do is make the kick, you know? And when you look back at it, the game was really close. And I think if if McCaffrey and, and Debo's didn't go out, they would they probably would have they would have won. They would have stayed undefeated. So I don't know. I might give them a I might give them a C plus for this game. What do you think, Killer? They did lose Debo. I mean, they lost. Yeah, they lost a couple key players, but Deshaun Watson didn't even play. Yeah, what I will say yeah, about this. True. What I will say about this is that no team goes undefeated throughout the whole season since 1972. You're gonna lose some games, and the 49ers still have an opportunity to win the game with four or five seconds left. So, I think you're gonna be in these close games if they kicker came through and did what the kicker's supposed to do. They would have yeah. been all right. Nigga, you don't have to do nothing else. It ain't yeah, like you yeah. got to run the ball back. Yeah, this yeah, is your yeah. own, your only job. Yeah. To kick the ball, man. And it wasn't like no 60-yard kick or nothing. It was like a 40-something yard. Are you yeah, supposed to knock that down? 41 yards. Yeah, you're supposed to knock that down, man. But uh, I think this builds character for the 49ers. I think Brock Purdy needed this. He hasn't lost the game. Yeah. Sometimes you got to get a, lo a loss on your resume. Better nailed it in the playoffs. Dion wouldn't Bowl. say that, Cam. Dion wouldn't say that. You need a loss. We gotta send you back. <laughs> we gotta send you back to Colorado. Okay? <laughs> Dion would not say that. What would Dion say? Dion ain't got no undefeated seasons, neither. Nowhere. I, I know, but he would say he needed. We needed this loss. <laughs> nah, he wouldn't say that. But what I'm saying is this: <laughs> Brock Purdy has not lost. And going on two, I mean, he ain't play a full season yeah. last. But Brock 15 Purdy, games. Yeah, I'm about to say Brock Purdy almost yeah, had a been full. About 14, 15 games. Brock Purdy almost had a Tom Brady perfect season yeah. almost. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you need this come back. Like I said, I think the, even losing uh, Debo and McCaffrey getting hurt, they're right there to win. They're yeah. right there to win. You got to blame now on the kickers. So I think 49ers did a good job. Even though Deshaun Watson wasn't playing, I think y'all should have won by much more, even mm -hmm. though y'all lost. But uh, it builds more character 49ers. They need this loss, I think. I know Jake better not miss no more game-winning field goals. I mean, six seconds. That, is, that was crucial. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad business. And then just to add, Brock Purdy actually had his first interception of the season. So this was definitely not one of his best games. but. Was that wasn't in the underdog fantasy, right? Because underdog, <laughs> underdog be knowing. Underdog, <laughs> underdog had him at point five. Underdog can tell you it was like a, a, a half an interception. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good point. Okay, the Eagles lost the New York Jets twenty to fourteen. So thoughts on this game, and how does this make you view the Jets now? 
Man, the Jets just couldn't score. I mean, it, it seemed like they can't get a touchdown. It's, every time they get there, they kick in the ball. It seemed like that that's the only way they was going to score. In the end zone, they don't seem like they could get in the end zone. Pause. I don't know what's wrong with that quarterback. And and it's, <laughs> it's not good for New York, you know? Where is he from? Is he from Duke? What is what's, Huh? Yeah, I knew he was one, from one of those funny schools, you know? Because <laughs> he, he gets to New York, he don't realize this is not BYU, bro. You're in the big leagues now. You got to you gotta score <laughs> touchdowns. You got to throw it to people that can actually catch and, and don't throw it off their shoulder pads, you know? They won the game, Mason. I know, but he still was playing horrible. He had no interceptions. Jalen Hurts had three. I, I get that. Yeah, he, he he was a good micro game manager today, and people got to stop sleeping on the Jets' defense. Man, the Jets got good defense. What I will say about this is that this Philly could easily be like one and four. Yeah, all their games been mad close, and this is just another close game that they happen to lose. They record could easily be, but they they're five and one. They easily could be one and four easily. So, yeah. I've been saying this for weeks that they haven't, they're going to get a breakout game. The breakout game hasn't come yet. And, <laughs> and, and basically, this is another, this is a law. This is another close game that they just happen to lose. Philly better be careful moving forward. They better get together. Yeah, they was comparing their stats with um, Russell Wilson. Yeah, well, we could talk about that game too. <laughs> Niggas trying to make me go viral last Thursday morning. Everybody playing my clips across the country by Russell Wilson. Like, I'm the only one, no. He ain't been winning since he been with Sierra, but that's another topic for him when we get to it. Yeah. But Philly, Philly has not been smacking niggas. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I th like I said, I'm not going to dwell on it, but they record could easily be one and four. Easy. And then speaking of the Broncos, the Chiefs beat the Broncos 19-8. to eight. What should be the next step for the Broncos is the real question. Uh... <laughs> Go ahead, Kev. Go on record right now. What's next for the Broncos? What do you think is next for the Broncos? If you're Sean Payton right now and you can make the decision and you I'm got the to, front I'm office trying to back preserve, in. I'm trying to preserve my voice. You know I would have been <laughs> one off on the Broncos, nigga. You know I would have lost it a long <laughs> five minutes ago. Look, man, um, well, Russell was at 95 yards. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't even have 100 yards, my nigga. Russ is tripping. Yeah, and two interceptions. Oh. Are you are you ready to blame it on on a, on his relationship, though? So that Thursday morning, uh, all throughout the United States Breakfast Club, all type of radio, it's like, Cam said he needs to leave Sierra to leave uh, to win the game. And I'm like, I've been said that <laughs> like last <laughs> season. Like, why are they making this news all over on uh, last Thursday? And I, they made me look like a genius. <laughs> you know, <laughs> two interceptions, less than 100 yards, uh, look no, looking nowhere like the Russell Simmons from the Seahawks. I, I look smart as fuck. Get out of there, Russ. Get they, out get, the get, movie. Get out, get out. The teacup. Get, get out the teacup. He's <laughs> stuck. He's, he's in the sunken place. Get out of there, bro. You're not going to win with her. And I'm not saying Sierra ain't a good look. Sometimes it's just bad luck. And it isn't meant to be bad luck. You know, <laughs> you know, you know I'm superstitious. You bad know, luck like what, a black cat or... Like, I give you an example. Or crossing, crossing, um... There's certain niggas that I be around, right? Pause. <laughs> Pause. And no money come in when I be around them niggas. <laughs> and they my friends. And then when I stop hanging out with for a while, mad money come around. <laughs> and, I, and I be like... I thought I was the only one <laughs> like that. And I was like, yo... <laughs> Yeah. You gotta be my friend from a distance. You, Cause when you around, it don't be no money coming in. When I'm around without you, mad bread be coming in. Like, like we got Duke the guy here today, right? Yeah. And listen, I'm not, I'm not uh I don't vote. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not, I don't, if I like what the Republican Party is doing, cool. If I like what the Democrat Party is doing, independent, whatever, I'm not gonna sit and act like I'm a big voting guy. But Duke is under the impression, he tells me, 
and I don't know what he is. Democrat. He said, but he's a Republican. When, <laughs> I don't know if he's Republican or not. He says when the Republicans are in, <laughs> way more money be floating around in America. <laughs> and I, I thought about it. I get mad money when it's a Republican in office. <laughs> it's like Democrat in now, and the money's good now, but when the Republicans is in, should be clicking. I'm just saying, I'm not on no side. I'm just telling you how the, <laughs> the checks be clicking when the Republicans is in. I'm not Republican, Democrat. I'm just telling you how it go. I, They're business friendly. That's why. Yeah, maybe so. I had to look at that point, man. That's how, yeah. you know, maybe... Sierra's in Democrat. <laughs> and Russell Wilson can't get no wins, man. I'm just saying. So that. he stops clicking when. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so for everybody's watching, Cam is basically saying Sierra is bringing Democrat vibes. She's, <laughs> she's slowing the progress up. Not that we're against Democrats. Cam is not against Democrats. He's just saying the flow. <laughs> According to Duke the God's te- terminology. According to Duke the God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Hey. But he did say, you did say last week that that he don't leave, need to leave her. You said in order for him to play well, she would have to leave him. In other words, her leaving him would turn the fire up under him. I'm not going to pause you. I'm going to let you turn the fire up under him. It's kind of crazy, <laughs> but that's why it took me a minute because I said, well, I, mean, <laughs> so I, I ain't going to do it if it was me, though. <laughs> if it was you, I would have done it. Look, let me ask you this. Uh, let Stat answer. What you think? <laughs> what you think as a lady? That he'll, be, that he'll be better off if she, I feel like that's that's vengeance. I feel like everybody does better when there's a heartbreak, not on their end, on the other person. It's not a heartbreak. Does she is bad that, luck? Is she, is she bad luck? Is she black? Is she like a black cat? What's that's another bad. thing that's bad luck? That's, yeah, the it would number, be like a black cat. Number thirteen. The number all that yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a superstition. Like a superstition. like a superstition. I don't think so. I think compared to a lot of people out here, she's great luck. To what? what? To what luck though? To I mean, he's happy. That's what matters. Is he happy football? Like football is wise. Denver um, happy? Denver is is the Broncos happy? happy? Is, not happy is Sean Payton happy? <laughs> <laughs> Sean Payton ain't happy. I could just. What do you think is going through Sean Payton's mind right now? He's on that. Come on, nigga. Come on, my nigga. Right now. <laughs> right now. He's at the at the peak of it. He's at definitely. The peak. Yo, he's definitely Sean Payton is like, yo, I would have never gone through this. So you don't think that, so you think his ha- he's happy at home, but what about his football career? Do you I think? definitely don't think he's happy with his football career, but that's, if that's his, he says it's his first priority, but that is, that I don't know. What's his first priority? I feel like it's family. Oh, yeah, that's just. Uh, he first. said like, football's first. I thought he was saying football. I don't football know what he said his first, first. first said, priority is. Football but. might be fifth for Russell. <laughs> So what's second and third and fourth? Um, Sierra is first. Baby future Sierra, second. Baby future is second. <laughs> um, and Sierra no spending is no, third. No diss to future because future my nigga. Yeah. But he one of them niggas I'm talking about Russell. He's trying to overdo, overdo it. it. Overdo it. To be like, yeah, yeah. I'm the real father. All yeah. that dumb ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I And think then th- spending is probably third. And then... um. Not his Taking spend, other trips. Not his fourth. spending either. Yeah. It's his spending on her. Yeah, his yeah. spending on Sierra's third. Mm-hmm. And then and then taking her everywhere. He he seemed like one of those people. He wanna he, be seen with her. He ain't taking her to the Super Bowl. Yeah. She ain't going there. <laughs> Won't be going to Disney World <laughs> on the account of the of the MVP. I know that. Yeah. Well, we'll see what's next for Russell Wilson. Moving along, the Bengals are getting some momentum back. They took a dub, beating the Seahawks 17-13. to Do you see the Bengals continuing to win moving forward? Hmm. Next, they play the 49ers, then the Bills. That's going to that's gonna really be tough, but I'm going to let Cam deal with that. That's his Ohio niggas, they, you know, and all of that going on. What you gonna let me deal with? 
What do you let me deal with exactly? Hey. Cincinnati. What did you see my man getting better? Because he was hurt all this time. And you see, you see what's going on now. Huh? He's doing a little, you know. <laughs> he outside. Yo, bird's definitely outside. You got man, his commercial you, bumping. Man, he had see, the headphones man, nigga, on. Nigga, see what's going on. You see my man coming back, pause. Yeah. Now, uh, now, like, now, I gotta handle it. <laughs> we eighty percent. Yeah, listen, the <laughs> Bengals play the Chiefs. December 30th. Yeah, I mean, maybe we we'll should see go, that. Maybe we should go. We should. <laughs> we should. Yeah, maybe. If we win, you'll wear all orange? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wear a cheap jersey or something like that. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm not just wearing orange. <laughs> like, nah. I ain't trying to look like a cone nigga. <laughs> 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 we're all orange. What is that? <laughs> Uh, listen, man. Uh, I see. I this is all Joe Burrow's getting better and stronger. That's all this is about, man. Um, I like Seattle too. You know, uh, Gino had a cup, rough couple games, but I mean, it's the Bengals, baby. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Bengals, <laughs> baby. And I told niggas it's seventeen games. I will say this though: the real test will be next week when they play the Forty ers because. The Bengals are coming along, and 49ers are just losing a game. If they lose two games in a row, they might panic. So and I think this will be good momentum if the Bengals win next week. So I think the test for both teams is next week. Yeah. I I think um I think even with um Geno's play, I, I just think teams need great quarterbacks. So I my now that I've been studying football a little bit, I don't like regular quarterbacks. Is that is that a I don't like quarterbacks that's just he average quarterbacks. Who do you feel like is an average quarterback? Like Gino, I just <laughs> dang. <laughs> I was just watching the game. I get bored. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, do something. Do something Marino would do. Just, maybe I you know, I've watched a lot of great quarterbacks. It's just hard to watch people that's just out there. Wow. <laughs> so Gino's just like average? He's, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the nigga was, he was in New York. Yeah. He's, he's like, he wanted a shot. He you got know, a shot. You know, like, you nigga, know, do something. Maybe he's like Andre Miller. Exactly, exactly. People think this nigga's going to be good. And we like, when, nigga? When? We've been waiting. Yeah. You got a basic game. Yeah, basic game. Yeah, you, you, he, I don't know if he's ever going to make it to title 10. Yeah, he's not going to make it to title 10. <laughs> Bad reality. You know, if, if They're it ain't, never going to let him in. If it ain't title 10, Mace can't <laughs> fuck with it. Yeah, I can't do that. Okay. So before we go to break, we're going to switch gears he, real quick. Is he better than Zach oh. Wilson? Them niggas might be a tie. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he better than Zach. He got me. <laughs> Zach, Zach, whatever you're doing, Zach, invest in some practices, man, for real. He got to spend his whole summer with Brady, yo. For real. He was with Aaron Rodgers. I know. Aaron, Aaron was sneaking his practices somewhere else. He wasn't letting that nigga shadow him. Okay. Okay. Bold take. Okay, so we're going to switch gears real quick before we go to break. Basketball star Mikey Williams mm. is ordered to stand on trial for six felony gun charges. The 19-year-old was arrested last April and was out on a $50,000 bond. If convicted, he could face up to 28 years. Thoughts on the situation? One thing I think about this situation with Mikey in, in San Diego is that... Um, for starters, why do people always say you're facing this many years? And I don't think it's likely he'll get 28 years, but they always throw that out there. Another another thing is when he was in the in the courtroom, he just looked like he was disconnected, like he's not taking this serious. Like normally when something bad happened and you had a promising career in front of you, it, it should be some seriousness that you see in the person. He was looking like after this, we we might light one up after this. You know what I'm saying? Like 
And I was, I was, I'm rooting for him. I'm hoping that he beat this because this is looking crazy. Shooting in a car is, is shooting in a car is nuts. Yeah. Do they have more detail about what actually happened? Um, Basically, they're just saying that he shot at the car. I'll figure yeah, they out say what he else shot happened. In the car but it like wasn't five passengers. Yeah, nobody got injured or anything. So. And no, God willing, nobody got hit. But yeah, five people in the car shooting in a, into a car is crazy. At least we know about it. I, I was about to say last season when we talked about this when it first <laughs> happened, we did say Mikey liked that. <laughs> <laughs> we did say he wanted them niggas because we was like. We was playing around and shit, but uh, we was comparing them to John Morant's situation, and neither one of those situations are really funny, but um, it's just a waste of talent, man. You know, these niggas be nice, and from what I'm understanding, he got a good household yeah. uh, coming from a good really family. Really good household. Yeah. Good family. Um, it's just a fucking waste, man, and trying to prove that you talk... I, I used to go through that complex, and it wasn't until I stopped playing basketball to realize that how dumb I used to look. Yeah. Probably trying to fight all the time during basketball games, after basketball games, and it's like, yo, we're not really fighters. We're basketball players. Now, yeah. given I played basketball in the 90s, so that's what I was watching when we was playing basketball. These niggas... You was watching the Knicks? Yeah, Knicks, <laughs> Chicago, Pacers, yeah. Boston. Everybody fighting. Yeah, everybody fighting. But these niggas can't even hit each other in basketball games. All this shit is internet related and yeah, and NBA young boy guys like all this. You shit. You think it's the music that got him going crazy? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think it's the music. I think it's the lifestyle. I think you blaming the, it on hip hop. I'm just saying. I I blame it on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this nigga, kill a camp, baby. Blaming it on hip hop is I'm crazy. Not, I'm not blaming it on hip hop. I'm blaming that these niggas is listening to hip hop <laughs> and losing their mind. I know a couple of niggas that got cut from the Raiders last year, and they said, "I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna go do the album." What, she, yo, what the <laughs> fuck are you t- Yo, what you mean you gonna do the album? You not gonna try out for another team? Uh, yeah. Nothing? Yeah, I forget it's crazy the, like I that. I forget the nigga from the Raiders name. The nigga... Nigga said the nigga, he gonna do the album? A nigga threatened him on social media. He DM'd him a picture of a gun and said, yo, nigga, I'm like that. Don't make me find you. Homeboy <laughs> posted his DMs. He gets suspended from the Raiders. Yeah. And he gonna go do the album. <laughs> Yo, yeah. I'm not blaming hip hop. I don't I'm care it. nothing about this. I, <laughs> I lose this right now. Yeah, this so yeah. yeah, this second year. That's so, when you really out of control. You let a nigga know you're risking all. I, I lose all of this right now. <laughs> so I'm not blaming music, but what I'm saying is his influences. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it ain't that much music to make me go lose my money. Because in his in his um in his freshman year, he was scoring seventy points. I remember they had you, him, you, yeah. You, you brought him up first. Yeah, he was up there. Yeah, you brought him up to the show first because you lived out there. You mm-hmm. said so, and that's that's crazy. That's that's really crazy, Mikey. We hope you we hope you um really get past this so you can go down there with Penny. And I will say it's interesting you made the hip-hop comment because his last post was actually him posting a video of him on trial and he quoted a Rilo song. So, wow. I don't, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. What, what quote? Give me the it quote. Says, Give me the, the quote. Say to judge in the DA, fuck with his head, just stay afloat. He going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> he going to jail. <laughs> this, this, this is not no. where you quote Rilo at. <laughs> Yo, this is the beginning of the trial, Mikey. You are wild, and this is not where you quote Rilo. You got to be quoting Marvin Sapp. Never would have made it without you, all of that. You get what I'm saying? Know, yeah. This is not where you do that. You quote Taylor Swift. If at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. <laughs> More inspirational, Mikey. Come on now. I told you that's He's the making music. it hard for me. He's making it really hard for somebody to stand in this corner doing that. What, Rallo. What, what's the quote? It says, say the judge and DA, 
fuck with his head, just stay afloat. So the song by Rilo was, I never be the same. This nigga talking about the judge and DA before the trial started is wild, man. Taking shots at the DA <laughs> is wild. Hey, that nigga think Penny coming to get him out the courts. Yeah, Penny he, can only help you if you make it out the courts, bro. Penny can't help you like that. Fuck the judge and DA is wild before the trial starts. Yeah, that nigga is worse than Tupac right do, now. Yeah, you supposed to do all that shit when you win. Yeah. And, it's, and be careful doing it after you win. <laughs> if you win. Nah, that is wow. Nah, that's wow. Well, let us know what you think is next for Mikey. We're hoping, you know, all goes well, but we will have to wait and see. We're going to go to break. And when we return, we will talk about Rich Paul's comments on the industry. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. She tired of hearing I don't know. My stubborn in me won't fall. Oh, oh. Dealing with this thing called trust. But she really thinking about She want to be free. Welcome back. So let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Today, the Cowboys will play the Chargers. Underdog fantasy has Dak Prescott at one and a half passing touchdowns. Do you have him higher or lower than Mason's? Pause. I'm going lower. I'm going lower. Yeah, I have to agree with Mason. Yeah, I'm not doing... <laughs> I'm not supporting anything that got on got going right now. I, I threw away all my cowboy hats. <laughs> I burned my cowboy hoodie. I was just about to say with that cowboy hat, all I'm, that should go. I'm I'm, I'm 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 totally out of the cowboy situation. Yeah. Jerry Jones couldn't pay me to come back. Yeah, I'm I'm going lower too. Okay. Yeah. Micah Parsons is at two and a half solo tackles. Do you have him higher or lower? Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna go higher. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm going higher too. Okay. And Justin Herbert is at half an interception. Do you have him higher or lower? Hmm. Half underdog is just giving this money away <laughs> for real. Half an interception. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go higher. I'm gonna go lower. Okay. Make sure to download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. Okay. In an interview, Rich Paul explained that during his come up, black agents weren't willing to help him. He said instead of helping him understand, they went to families and talked bad about him, basically saying, oh, he's just a kid and he's just LeBron's friend. How do you feel about his comments? Mm -mm -mm. Before we get into Rich Paul, Cam, are you really saying that hip hop did that? Yeah, she's quoting lyrics <laughs> and he's acting <laughs> off what the lyrics are, supposedly. And if I, cause I'm thinking about it, if he, I don't mean to harp on it, but if he's quoting <laughs> Rilo right now, I'm going to blame it on hip hop. <laughs> I'm serious. The 50th the, year of hip hop. The 50th. On the 50th year of hip hop, I got to blame it on hip hop. In fact, that ain't really hip hop, but because hip hop ain't get you killed. It's a new hip hop. Well, well, hold on, who died? Shooting in the car could lead to death. Well, listen, Biggie and Tupac died. This that was hip hop. That was the hippie the hip hop hop. Yeah, that that was hip hop. You're right. Yeah, that was that wasn't even. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Yeah, that was hip hop. They need better role models. You didn't get this from Will Smith and Beastie Boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you didn't get this from Run DMC. Nobody shot in your car and all that. Yeah, I mean, have you ever had a Beastie Boys album? <laughs> or did you have an NWA album? <laughs> I had an NWA. I had a Snoop Dogg album. Yeah, the doggy style. Murder was the case the, that they gave. The, the Chronic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right. We apologize, Mikey. Mob style. Yeah, mob, mob style. style. Yeah, like it. We yeah. had no Beastie Boys. Boot camp click. Yeah. 
Duck Dale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. right. Black Moon. Yeah, Smooth the Hustler. EPMD. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah we always like gangster music. <laughs> yeah, it's been the, oh, have you ever had a Father MC album? No. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's crazy. Yeah, tell Mikey to listen to Father MC. Yeah, or Marky Mark. Yeah, niggas ain't doing that. Smooth sensation, of course. <laughs> 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 yeah. Definitely very, very different now. Yeah. Okay. Niggas drilling, man. Yeah, niggas drilling. This is straight drilling out here, man. We yeah, all this trying to sugarcoat it. Niggas out here drilling, man. That's yeah. that, man. You're right. Yeah. Hope they got half his bell, though. First of all, we, we in the ever where niggas is dying and then they roll you up. <laughs> in the yeah, pack. this is a whole new era. <laughs> they say, they smoking on they it. They smoking yeah. on nigga right after he die. Yeah, that's yeah. super disrespectful. Yeah, I seen this shit the other day. And I don't know, not saying hip hop, it was beef, young niggas beefing. Yeah. Niggas went and took a nigga uh, tombstone and brought it back to the block. <laughs> like nah, that was. Super. I'm not laughing. <laughs> 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 That's, that's what, really that's, that's really crazy. Dude, that's, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Like we at that type they of taking shit. disrespect to a whole new that, level. That's what the disrespect is at an all time. The take a nigga tunes don't be like yo, bring yeah. it back to the block of the ops. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm not even gonna laugh at that. I don't know who that is. Me, yeah, I don't know. I'm like that. Yeah. He was just on the net. So Rich Paul, <laughs> yes. back to Rich Paul. Okay, yeah. So basically, Rich Paul was saying people weren't helping him with his come up and that black agents would go and talk to other people about him and basically said, he's just a kid. He's just LeBron's friend. So thoughts on him sharing? this? Yeah, so when I, when I think about Rich Paul, he's done an amazing job. I mean, looking at now, he's made over probably close to $4, $4 billion. That's a lot of money. Especially when he was on the 60 Minutes, I was watching that. and. And the thing that stuck out to me, Paul's the most about him is that this is the way it was supposed to go. Sometimes the road, when you have to take the harder road, you end up better. Like I look at that in music. I look at it in the same way as sports. Sometimes the athlete that had to take the road of the most resistance end up the better athlete, end up the better artist, like even artists. There's some artists that they didn't start out well, but it kept getting better, 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 better. And it ended up having a great career because of that. So I can't I can't really support anybody that had it easy. Um first of all, that interview was really dope with Rich. It was a really yeah. good interview. Uh he did a really dope interview on uh first take as well. Um just saying he never took LeBron's friendship for granted. He came with shit to bring to the table like <laughs> I wish my voice was a little better because I want to really elaborate on this story and maybe I'll come back to it on tomorrow or the day after when I feel a little better. But Rich Paul is the prime example of when you're around somebody that's getting money or that's a superstar or in a good position, don't take advantage. Don't take for granted your position. Yeah. Because Rich Paul came to bring shit to the table. He just didn't hang around with LeBron. Well, he made he made a great point. What he said was this. He said, I want to make sure that my shit would still be good if LeBron just said, fuck everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So basically, let's say LeBron wanted to retire tomorrow. He had to figure out what he was going to do if LeBron said, I don't want to do this no more. Yeah. Now, like you said, $4 billion later, clutch sports, it ain't just LeBron. He got Jalen Hurts. Raymond Green, a bunch of other players. So if LeBron don't want to do this no more, he's situated. And I mm -hmm. think that people need to pay attention to that. He started off as LeBron stylist. So wow. every step of the way, he was saying that he made sure he learned something and that he took advantage of what he learned to bring shit to the table yeah. for LeBron. And I think that that was very important because a lot of times, like, Another great example is like my man Don C. He was working for Kanye. Yeah. And he was like, I see what's going on here. Let me figure yeah. out. Yeah. Let me figure out my exit strategy in case Kanye go left. I'll be situated. Now he does 
sneakers. He does hats. He does all the jerseys for yeah. um, MLS. He's very he's situated because of the opportunity that he had with Kanye. And I say he wasn't doing shit before that. My first time I ever got booked in Chicago in 97, Don booked me. So yeah. he's doing shit before Kanye. But when he's around these people, he take advantage of the opportunity. And that's what Rich Paul did. Back to the original question, though. I just want to salute him on them two interviews. Back to the original question, though, uh, or topic. Black agents didn't help him. Look, when you're in a position, what I'll say this to Rich Paul is this, bro. Um, and I'm pretty sure he knows that. He was just yeah. stating what happened. Drew Blitzo was not going to help Tom Brady take his job. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tony Romo was not going to help. I mean, Drew Blitzo was not going to help Tony Romo take his job when he gets yeah. to Dallas. And sometimes people see the writing on the wall and what's about to happen, and they're not going to help you be better than what they are because they feel threatened by that. Yeah. Black, white, Spanish, any color. It doesn't matter to me the color. I get what he's saying. Like, as black brothers, we should help each other. Yeah. But if you're going to surpass where they're at, they feel threatened. And I think yeah. that's the situation. And look where he's at now. Yeah. Right past everybody who didn't help him without them helping him anyway. Yeah. I I think that's really good. And I'll, I probably will say something that that the same way he felt is probably the same way we felt coming into this. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Nobody's going to help us. Yeah. Ain't going to be nothing but hate. Yeah. Ain't going to be... Why would, why would somebody help us get past what they're doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A few niggas help. Don't get me wrong. You like, I, we always shout them out. Brandon Marshall, of course, Gilbert Arenas. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Gillian Garnett, Wallow. Gillian Wallow, definitely. Yeah. You know, 100% Gilly and Wallow, but I wouldn't expect nobody else to help because we, yeah. we're go, they seen the writing on the wall and it happened. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And that's just with anything in life, people really do like you until they feel like you're going above them. Like you're a threat. Yeah. I, I, I think another way to look at it is that if you, if you could bring in your replacement, then... I think that says more about you, like on a on a higher note, just giving an objective view. Like if you bring in somebody, let's say I'm doing a million and I bring in somebody that could do 10 million, then that 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 speaks to the the success of the person. I think that black people are yet to understand that, that you want to bring the person in that's better than you. That's like a different way to look at it. It's a legacy. Yeah. You should be proud of that. But people get intimidated. And yeah. I mean, you're 100% right, but sometimes people are so caught up in their star that they're not, they yeah. don't know how to identify talent as well. Mm -hmm. It's another thing, identifying talent. Uh, you, could be the, you could be the biggest, and I'm going to call names out. Yeah. You got mad stars who don't know how to identify other talent because mm -hmm. they're so wrapped up in, in their talent. Like, I remember, uh, you know, my whole plan was I used to be jealous of, before internet and social media, Mm -hmm. of Kevin Lowes and Leo Cohen and people like that, not because of anything else, but the fact that they would have more money and be less seen. You know, this is before you had to be seen on yeah. social media and everything. I used to be like, I remember I was in a the movie theater with Kevin Lowes and so many people was coming up to me for autographs and I'm like, this is the nigga who gave me the deal right here. And he'd be like, yo, Cam, stop that shit. Like he didn't want yeah. people knowing who he was. And I was like, you know, niggas like, y'all moving like a little more stealth cam. But at the end of the day, that was always my thing to find talent. Yeah. So I can make a couple of dollars. I don't need to make more than them. But if I make a couple of dollars and got 20 artists, yeah. I'm making equivalent or more than them because I'm putting different acts out. Like, for instance, yeah. you got $4 billion, right? And yeah. I don't know where uh, Rich Paul's uh, percentage is on each person. But let's just say, for instance, this year, I think he did a billion dollars this offseason. Mm -hmm. Let's just say he gets uh, 7%, something yeah. like that. So you you got $70 million that you worked out with to, with five or six different uh, athletes you got. Are they getting $70 million total? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it equivalates to where you make enough money if you help people out and do everything else. And that's just off of NBA contracts. Not even endorsements or anything else like so that. So them not helping them help them. What I'm saying is I'm agreeing with you. When you <laughs> yeah. could bring 
somebody else. And it don't have to be, we bring to my rich ball. But yeah. for instance, if, you, if you're if you an artist and you be like, okay, I sold a million, but I know this nigga sell 10. Yeah, yeah look, look at what's the name. I say he do shit for yeah. mad years. He found Justin Timber, um, Justin, Justin Bieber. Bieber. Pardon me, Justin yeah, I got maybe I, I come back out whenever I, I get back to it. When I get back I to it, I come back yeah. later on. Exactly. Yeah. So shit like that. Yeah. Good points. Okay, so this has been circulating a lot on social media, internet. So Paul George opened up on his beef with him and Devin Booker. He said, "Me and Devin always been good. He was a little bro when he came in the league." Then all of a sudden, the temperature changed to where he stepped over the line. So now it is what it is at this point. Thoughts on him sharing this. What, what, what do you mean, step line? over the line? Yeah, so basically, they've been beefing for a minute. Like, they've had altercations on the court, but on um, Paul George's podcast, he asked Clay Thompson about him holding up the four rings to um, Devin Booker when he got ejected in that game. Clay Thompson came back and said that he regretted doing that. And um, basically, I think Devin Booker thought that Paul George was going to like, talk about it, make fun of him. And so Devin Booker responded, oh, is that the answer that you wanted? And ever since then, they've just been going back and forth about a lot of stuff, but he shared this in an interview with Taylor Rooks. So I wanted to get you guys' opinion on yeah. the beef that is Yeah, this, is. this beef between <laughs> Devin Booker and um, Paul George's classic nigga stuff is like... <laughs> You looked up to this nigga until you met him. <laughs> and then you, that that happened to me when I first got into music. I used to look up to these niggas. I, then I meet them. I'm like, yo, this nigga's corny, yo. <laughs> So yeah, this nigga, yeah. yeah, this nigga hating on me. I, I used to love this nigga and this nigga hating on me. And then sometime it'd be over so, girls. We're not saying that this was happening with Paul George, but I can see how that happens. And then you get to that place where you was a little bro in you. And now you give a nigga 40 points two times in a row. You ain't little bro no more. I'm the big dog out here now. <laughs> right? He ain't looking at him like, big bro, big bro what? Like, nothing, ain't no big bro. That's exactly what's going on. They can make it about something else, but that's really what's happening. And then, and then when you get to meet him, and you feel like you'll take it a little bit further than he'll take it, you is is no way for a book to respect Paul George, and I and I like Paul George as a player, but when you think about caliber, you think of mindset, you think of skill set, it's nothing for him to respect over itself. Then, then when um. When Paul George ran down on you, why would you tell me he's the GOAT then when he asked you why he can't be the GOAT? <laughs> I knew you was going to say that. Why would you agree and say, okay, you can be the that. GOAT? <laughs> I mean, I ain't know all this information. <laughs> you said things change week to week, you know? Come to find out, you know, Paul George from, I mean, um, Devin Booker might be from Mississippi, somewhere in the South. So we might be related. I don't know. <laughs> Look, what I'll say about it is this is that I think, I think but they may hit the uh, nail on the head pause that a lot of, a lot of players are, uh, not just players, a lot of people who are successful who get older don't like young niggas coming, taking the glory that they used to have. And Devin yeah. Booker is kind of, what Paul George used to be. And I'm not saying Paul George isn't nice still and still isn't good. But, you know, same thing when he when he's be, when he's beefing with Klay Thompson. Yeah. You know, uh, they beefing Klay Thompson coming back off injury, aggravated niggas is giving them 40. Yeah. And only four For rings. Title yeah. town. Yeah. Title, yeah. Title, title yeah, town. Yeah, he's trying to go title yeah, town. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it does get frustrating when somebody younger who comes in and and might bust your ass for us mm -hmm. and you can't do nothing about it, so you're living off history. I'm not yeah. saying that's what happened with Paul yeah, George. Yeah, that is what's happening. You okay. think about Book. Book is like, even Paul George in his glory is not better than Book in his glory. Book is a little 
a little bit more aggressive than Paul George. Paul George was Indiana pace of what Paul George was. No, Paul right, George man. was nice, but Book is a savage. It's a difference. He it's almost like, had LeBron a couple years, man. Paul George, Indiana pace of Paul yeah, George, was, man. He was close, but he was a smooth close. Um, Book is more like. Book is more like us. If he'll step on your oxygen if he need to. Yeah, I, I You know, I, Paul George just say my bad. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He got a nice streak to him. Book has like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody don't have that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at that. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm you, just, that's what I just, mean. It, I'm it's I'm not skill that. set, it's the mentality. And because he lacks that mentality, he can never be that guy because he won't do what's necessary. I'm not gonna argue with you about it, Paul. Paul George. Oh, run down on him you again. See, <laughs> you see now when you see him, it's him saying this shit. Paul is not me. No, and you see him in the no, window. Paul is dead that. nice. He just got he, he got nice mannerisms. He's a nice guy, you know. Book is not that nice. So basically, you're trying to say. I get what you're saying. You made yeah. a great, you made a great example to where Paul George is. If you come in, Paul's coming in the building. Paul George is gonna hold the door for you to make it. If you all the exactly. way down there, they get in. Where Book will see you too far, and he's just gonna let the door slam. It's like it's like how KD used to be with LeBron. KD had the talent, but K, KD would defer to LeBron. He would be nice until somebody told him, "No, nigga." Go out there and handle your business. And then KD went out there, hit three on him, started going crazy. And now he's in the right mindset. Let us know your thoughts on their beef. We're going to go to break. And when we return, we will talk about the James Harden and Kelly Oubre beef. She called this thing about was toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna us. be free Welcome back. It's been revealed Kelly Oubre Jr. is married to James Harden's ex. Kelly is officially part of the Sixers roster alongside his teammate James Harden. Do you think this will affect the chemistry of the team or it's not a big deal? Oh my goodness. James, you know we fool with you up here. It is what it is. But I don't know if it's James Harden or James Heartbreak. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you don't ever want to do is lose your girl to a light-skinned nigga with gray eyes. <laughs> you never going to get her back. <laughs> you can lose her to a hood nigga, but a light-skinned nigga with, with light eyes, ain't nothing you can do about that. Your dog skin, he's light. Your hair's coil. <laughs> His is curly. It's, it ain't nothing you can do about that, man. Having to the best of us, fellow Virgo. <laughs> Love you, James. Cam, what you think? <laughs> I think it's you ever a, lost a girl to a curly head, Nick? I told y'all, women don't leave me, man. I explained this to you. Second oh, yeah, grade, yeah, you did say that. Second grade, last time, put gum in a girl hair. Ain't happened since, man. Yeah. I let them go, man. You let them go? Let them fly, baby. Let them fly. Let them fly, man. Let them fly, man. <laughs> a nigga do care. He know I got niggas. Hey. To, I pay bitches to leave. That's true. Yeah. It's better you let them leave because I had a girl hit me in the head with a brick because I <laughs> I'd let her go. I don't know how much you want to talk about your past. Like I said, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how far you want me. <laughs> I, I be trying to be cool about shit. <laughs> don't judge me because of I, my past. I, 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 I don't want to. I don't know how far you want to go. I got a bunch of shit we can. Yeah. I can go back to rap city yeah. and everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Exactly. I forgot what I was You're right. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't know how far you be wanting to go. So <laughs> I'll be chilling. I don't know where we could go with shit. <laughs> yeah. That's why we try to tell James we understand, James. Yeah. We understand. And then, when yeah. you give me permission, I'm going to just shut up. <laughs> I ain't going to say nothing. Look at Duke. Duke like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got the original yeah. team. Yeah. Uh-huh. And Duke was our road manager when we were 16. <laughs> I ain't going to oh, say nothing. Man. No, you know what's crazy one time? You know, we used to have free crib, not Mason, so I guess I ain't going. We had free crib, man. And I, Duke used to always have free crib because his, his mother would go away and we would steal his mother's car and shit. And Duke was, Duke, <clears throat> pardon me, Duke was in there with his girlfriend. Yeah. In, the, in his mother's room and I was in his room. <laughs> There's a new girl I'll try to knock her head off. I was, I was banging this bitch. <laughs> Fucking headboard. <laughs> Kept hitting the wall. This nigga Duke bust in the room and said, Stop showing off. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm in there with my girl. I don't want to fuck. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop showing off as well. Yeah. <laughs> So wild yeah. nigga, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, <"Hell>, this <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about her 16th Street. We we'll leave. <laughs> you leave that for another day when you're ready. Leave that for another day. Um, yo, look back to James Harden. That look, this to me, it makes a lot of sense. I don't know how true it is or isn't true, but. It could it, it explain a lot to why James Harden's going this hard. Like, yo, you first of all, you drafted this, not drafted, you picked this nigga up. You know I had a problem with him. You, I told you what happened. You told me you're gonna trade me. Now I gotta be around a nigga who had my girl and had babies and married her. But why you got a problem? Why you got a problem with him? Why he can't be professional? He got other hoes. I'm not disagreeing. I'm with not you. calling his wife. We definitely not calling your wife a hoe. I'm saying he got other girls. Why would why would that be a problem? Just for the listeners. Would you have a problem with it? (laughs) (laughs) I'm playing playing basketball. All right, right, let me give an example. Do do the wives come on the bus and on the plane and all that? I'm going to tell one Mace story, and it's not bad. Nothing nothing crazy because we're going on. Mace had a girlfriend when we we was in high school. (laughs) And he broke up with her. They broke up or whatever. Yeah. And she got another boyfriend, but Mace had left her. This is like time for ninth turn grade, eleven yeah. grade. But Mace had left her. But she got another boyfriend and stayed cool with Mace's parents. So now she's trying to come to the crib with her new boyfriend. With me. <laughs> and niggas is like, yo, her man, what the fuck is she doing here with the new boyfriend? I forgot about it. <laughs> and I'm like, yo. She is wild. Yo, no, but she's doing that because Mace yeah, now wanted. Under, now I understand James Harden's yeah, point. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't want, Mace didn't want it no more. She was upset. So now she stayed cool with Mace's mom, bringing the new nigga. I'm like, yo. But she was cool with Mace's mom. And Mace was like, I didn't say no, nigga. Yeah. 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 But the point is, this is like yeah. same thing I'm relating yeah, to you. I get, I it was it. Mad, that was mad violation to be bringing the new nigga to your crib because you don't want her no more. Yeah, I you're think right. it's the same scenario. I understand James better now. <laughs> Cause I definitely did say that. <laughs> yeah, man. I thought it was, I was mad. Like I'm still mad. Think about it. I was fucked up to do. And listen, I didn't do nothing. Nothing yeah, ever happened. We didn't do anything. It was. It was. I was that mad about it though. And, yeah. And listen, this 1991. We trust. We fresh off Snoop Dogg, Gin and Juice, yeah. and all that, my nigga. Blame that on Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. The attitude, man. Blame it on hip hop. Yeah. There we Blame go. It on hip hop. That's definitely a sticky situation, but we will see what happens. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, it is what it is. Uh,